often do we get swallowed by the busyness of adulthood and I feel like we forget to sit down and truly appreciate the wonders of life like we once did in our childhoods. So exactly 386 days ago, my dad died at the age of 46. It was right after his birthday. We were going to go to Wild Waves. I was very excited. And then I got the call. Um, if I were to describe my dad, I'd like to say he was like the warmth of summer with the coziness of autumn. He really could make anyone feel cared for, feel appreciated. My dad definitely was that person that would sit on the plane next to you or be pumping his gas next to you and fully become best friends with you within those five to 10 minutes. He really was just this ray of sunshine. Life is very short and you really shouldn't wait to chase your dreams because Tomorrow is not promised. You only have today, so you should spend every single day you have guaranteed going after something that you love doing and is gonna make you happy. May I ask you why you haven't started chasing your dreams already? Is it that you feel like you don't have enough time between your busy life and your day job? Is it because you feel like you don't have enough money to fund the capitalism life that we live in? or? Is it because you feel like you are not good enough and so you give up on your dreams before even trying? Now, it may not be you or your circumstances, but I really wanted to sit down here face to face. I didn't want to do this as a voiceover. I really wanted to sit down and share my story with you so that in hopes you can find some comfort or some relatability in how I started chasing my dreams and hopefully it can give you that nudge to start chasing yours. Let's start at why I started doing art. I truly started doing art as just a passion. I just really liked drawing and learning and trying to improve my skill. My actual dream at the time was I wanted to be a doctor or a nurse practitioner specializing in heart surgery. Um, that's what I really dreamed of doing. I really loved the idea of helping other people and being able to make an impact on their lives. So that's kind of where it started. I just did art as a hobby and just to have something fun to do between my studying. So actually, while I was working on this script, my friend Nella was here. And when I was explaining to her about my passion and how it turned into my dream, she genuinely asked me, well, what's the difference between a passion versus like a dream or career? And I really liked that question. So I wanted to include it in here because she said that she never really um, had heard anyone define the difference between them. So this is how I personally defined a passion versus a dream. I define passion as something that you enjoy doing or learning about, not something that you necessarily dream making money of. So like, for example, I really love learning about airplane crash investigation. It's so random, I know. I love watching airplane crash videos and learning about it and understanding how they investigate and everything that goes into the safety of flying planes. But boy, would I never want to do that as a living. I would never want to make money from that. It doesn't seem that fun or enjoyable to see all of that. But I really am passionate about airplanes and the safety behind them. Like my art started out as a passion, but as my dream changed from wanting to be a doctor into working for myself and being financially stable, while still remaining happy, I kind of had to ask myself, well, how can I achieve that? And that's where art became the answer. After my dad died, I actually love creating art. Uh, I use it as a therapy. I like to draw out my feelings and just kind of draw things that mean something to me. I'm pretty sure all artists are that way or anybody with creative passion. Um, that's just kind of how creative people work. We like to turn our life experiences into almost like a momentum that we can hold and look at and remember fondly on. The mist of creating this story between Stevie and Angela and the Paris family and just kind of working on that as a passion, I realized that realistically, I could do art for the rest of my life and be actually happy doing it. And I know for a fact that I could be financially stable while doing it. So that's kind of where my passion and then my dream meshed into one. Dreams and passions are not the same thing. They can go hand in hand. They can work with each other, but you have to understand that the passion has to go beyond just being a hobby. You have to realize that in order to turn that passion and mesh it with your dream, 
you have to be willing to do whatever that dream requires of you. So if there's something that you don't find super enjoyable, like some people don't like taxes, in order to do your dream, it might require you to do that on your own. So whatever it is, you have to be willing to learn and adapt to achieve whatever that dream requires. Just this paragraph for like 30 minutes because I keep going off on tangents about Stevie and Angela and all the cool parts of their story, but I'm not here to give you the entire story nitty gritty. I'm here to give you the synopsis, the thesis, the summary of the story. So I started my business out with passion. It became my art and then my life experience with my family and that created this story. So the story is about Stevie and Angela that's the parents. Stevie is a chef and Angela is a scientist. They met in a cooking club class in college. And while one of them fell in love very slowly, one of them fell in love at first sight. And pretty much what happens is Angela developed cancer. And as she's slowly dying, she decides before she dies, she wants to make good on a promise that she made the day they met. And as she laid on the bed, taking her last final breath, she finished her project and she hands Stevie this red envelope and she instructs him, do not open this until after I've passed away, until after you've buried me and don't forget about the envelope either. So in his ocean of grief and watering these seeds, that's all he did. He just watered them and watered them and he just cared for the garden because that's all he had from her. And eventually these seeds sprout into the four onion children that you see in the artwork I have. So the oldest is Noriko. He is a sweet onion. The second oldest is the green scallion. He is Minato or a green onion, you can say. Rika, she's a shallot. She's the purple one. Um, she is the second youngest. And then the youngest coming in dead last is the white onion, um, Fumiko. So these are his four children. And I share the busy family life of a single parent with four children trying his best to raise them to be good people. That is my story. That's where it all starts is Stevie and Angela and her dying of cancer and him sprouting four onion children from her because she was a scientist. She was cuckoo caca. As you can tell, this is the first time you learned or heard about this story. And that was one of the biggest mistakes I made um, starting to chase my dreams. I failed to take accountability. And if you can't take accountability for your own faults, you have to understand that nobody's going to make your dreams come true. You have to put in all of the work. For me, I failed to share my story. I failed to gain interest in my characters. I failed and neglected to step out of my comfort zone and put my story out there because it is hard because the story revolves around my actual life and real life experiences and it's scary putting yourself out there like that. But if you don't, I, I had to learn the hard way that people just don't care about your art if they don't know the characters or care about the family. And it's, and it's harsh to say that, but that is just reality. When you go to these artist alleys and stuff, people are looking for characters that they love, that they have a, a, an interest in commonality with them, relatability with them. Like they love these characters, so they want to buy art. And for me to build a sustainable career off of my story, I have to step out of my comfort zone and I have to share that story with you guys and I have to put it out there in the world to be judged. And that's scary, but that's the reality of the dream I'm chasing. My solution in the meantime, while I'm trying to build out my story and figure out how I want to share it, is to make art of things I have in common with other people, like Studio Ghibli, games that I grew up playing, like Legend of Zelda. Um, I can make artwork of those things because while I do and can make artwork of stuff that I personally didn't make, I want to make sure that I still love and enjoy doing it because nothing's worse than showing up and creating art of the most popular characters just because they're popular. While yes, you can do that, but I just find that's gonna drain me mentally and creatively to just do stuff that I don't care about. So I'm not gonna do that. That is the solution. And I can say it is working. As I grow that side of my artwork, I can bring in the capital and the income to build out my story and take time off to make comics and animations and do all of that. That all takes money. So I kind of had to compromise I have to make art, not particularly about my story, but I do have to still 
continue to work on my own stuff. So this is what I mean by you have to really take accountability and find to creative solutions that work for you with your best interest in mind. I was chatting with Nilla about all of this. She gave me this really powerful quote. It's kind of like a quote between both of us. I added to it, but this is the quote from Nilla that hit me hard and I just absolutely had to share it with you guys. And it says, you have to understand that you will fail. You need the mindset to be able to pick yourself up and learn from your mistakes. Nobody will save you. No one will make you find success and no one can take the blame. Only you can make it happen. I know, round of applause for my friend Nilla because that was like the hard hitter for me. Like really, I am the only person responsible for if this dream is successful or if it fails. Only I can give up on myself and of course I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to sit here and tell you right now what you see online, these, oh, you can make a million dollars, you can make a hundred grand. It's not that easy. Building a business is a lot of trials and tribulations. You are going to be stressed out of your mind at times. I'm going to let you know, if you are not prepared to be working hard and problem solving and just doing everything you can to make your dreams become a reality, this is not for you. If, if, if you are not willing to do whatever it takes for whatever dream you have at the moment, that's not the dream for you. I'll just, I'll be blunt with you and kick you in the butt and tell you that. There really is no perfect guide. There is no specific five-step solution to building a successful business. It is all trial and tribulation. So you are going to have to learn it along the way. While people can give you advice, like, you know, have good editing, you know, have a good mic, make sure you have standard products. You know, you can, you can make art on this popular anime and still not make any money. It's all trials and tribulations. So be prepared to have your patience tested to the ends of time. It will be maxed out a lot of the time. But one thing I also want to say is when you are truly chasing a dream that you're passionate about and that you love and that you're happy doing, I would never trade a minute of the stress that I face because in my heart, I really love it. I love the trials and tribulations of trying to become a full-time artist. Nothing is going to deter me from achieving this dream and making it a reality. I dream about the day that I get to wake up and go sit at a coffee shop and work on my business. I dream about the day that I get one of those little Shopify counters and when I do a shop launch, I sell out. It's it's like it's just seeing the stepping stones and the journey from now until I hit that point is just such a driving factor for me. So when you do pick your dream, you have to really know you love it and you really want to be behind it. I, I don't know how else to say it. Like nothing, art is just my life. Yeah. You know, if you're still sticking around, um, to me, it feels like this is going to be quite a bit a ways in. I, when I wrote the idea, it should have taken like 10 minutes, but knowing me, I'm not good at making short videos nowadays. So definitely comment down a banana. Um, if you're still here after Nilla's quote and my little tangent that I just had. So having been on this journey for over four years, I just want to let you know that is a testament to how much patience you're going to need while chasing your dream. Um, uh, YouTube, social media, they like to glorify it and, and like, oh, I sold out on my first con and blah, blah, this and that. That's not how it's going to be. I'm going to tell you right now, it takes patience. And if you want to snap your fingers, click your heels three times and magically wake up to a million followers and a fully sold out shop, you're delusional. And it's just not going to come to you like that. You really have to have some patience and you have to have some hard working ethic. So if that's what you're expecting, go ahead and give up, give up right now. Cause you're just gonna, you're not going to truly want to do it in the long run. So you might as well not try if I'm being honest, but in all reality, good things do take time. All good things take time. And I promise you, if you put in the work and you put in the effort, it will come back to you in you know, three times fold, 10 times fold. When you get there, you'll just be like, wow, I made it. So you really have to ask yourself. Are you willing to give up your weekends? Are you willing to give up your free time? Are you willing to give up all your extra income? Are you willing to do whatever it takes 
and sacrifice whatever it takes to achieve your dreams? These are the hard hitting questions you have to ask yourself when you're deciding if this is truly what you wanna do and this is truly the dream you wanna chase. I know for me, I am not happy working for other people. It is not because they work hard it's not because they work me hard. It's not because they give me long hours. It's not because they don't give two flying poops about my life and anything that's going on. Because I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I work myself to the bones. I don't take breaks. I don't eat. I forget to use the bathroom. I get too engrossed. I stay up over overly late. I don't get enough sleep. It is not any of that. I, I treat myself just as bad as some of these jobs treat us. But the difference is, I am so happy. The difference is, I love with all of my heart, the trials and tribulations, the hard work, the long days, the sacrifice. I love it because I know where I'm headed. I know where I want my dream to end. I wanna be able to put out a shop launch and people will be waiting at the store eagerly for it to open. I want to get there. I wanna make a hundred figures. I wanna make a million dollars. But these are things that take time. In reality, I'm looking at eight years ahead, you know, 10 years ahead to hit that million dollars in sales. When I get my, my Shopify counter and I, and I reach my first thousand orders and I reach my first 10,000 orders, like all of these things are just so exciting to me that all of the sacrifice, the hard work, the tears, the crying, the over exhaustion is so worth it because in the end, with all of my heart, all of my being, I want to be a full-time artist and I want to create the story of Stevie and Angela and I want to share it with the world. But yeah, I really do want to know, do you guys have any idea of what your dream is? And if you do have a dream, do you have a plan to achieve it or are you just avoiding it? I really want to know. So comment that down below. I'm very curious. But yeah, if you want to join this journey that I call life and you want to follow along me and how I'm going from rags to riches, uh subscribe today to become a little onion and join the paris family or not either way i just really hope this um helped you realize that you need to start chasing your dreams and you need to stop putting it off stop putting it aside because like i said earlier only today is promised tomorrow is just a maybe so yeah i love you guys so much and i can't wait to see my little onions in the next one yes you guys are officially onions so if you really made it all the way to the end you are truly part of the paris family you are a little onion and comment down an onion are you a green onion are you a white onion are you a sweet onion or are you a shallot let me know in the comments down below and i'll see you guys in the next one bye